What's up, divas and divas? So, you guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday, and I decided to just leave the room, like, kind of dark because I got one light on because it'd be so hot. Let me tell y'all, it'd be hot with a ring light and with these other, like, uh, recording lights. Like, it gets hot in here. So, you know, it's not a tutorial or anything like that, so you really don't need to see much. You know, you can see me anyway, my light ass. So, you know, I figured this is just... This, this will work because you don't even have to look at me. You can just listen to me, okay? I guess some people want to see my facial expressions, but, you know. So, um, got my RP, excuse me, not RPG show. Their sister company, my first wigs wig on that I did a video on. Let me tell y'all, ladies, this is like the best wig ever that I have ever gotten from them. Um, what if, whether it be my first wigs or RPG show, you know, cause it still is the same damn company. It's just two different sites. You know, I'm pretty sure they make wigs for each other. They make all the same damn wigs. It's the same damn company, but this is the best one that I have ever received. I'm, and I'm thinking like, was it the best? Because there was one before this, that was really, really good. And I said to myself that it was the best one. But then when I got this one, now I feel like this one is the best one. Hold on. Okay, so I don't even remember what I was really saying because my grandson came in to thank me for the Happy Meal from McDonald's that I just had bought him. And he had came home and seen it on the counter from his mom mom. You know, because that's who I am. I'm mom mom. So anyway, like I, I, was, I was talking about the wig, all right? Um, like, you know, I had to think to myself, like, was this the best one? But then there was one prior to this that was better than all the others, but not as good as this one. And I did get a 360 frontal from RPG show one time, and that shit was like butter, baby. Really nice, but not as nice as this. I think because when you first got their wigs, like 10 years ago when I first started wearing their wigs, they was decent. You know, lace wigs had just came out kind of like, and you know, over the time you have seen so many different companies come on set that when you look at an RPG show one, you're like, okay, that's nice, but I can get this one for cheaper and nicer. So that's how I feel about them sometimes. Like I love them. Don't get me wrong. I've been working with them for 10 years and they have some good quality wigs. They have really, really evolved, but a bitch is not rich. Okay. And if I had to pay for it, I was definitely going to go elsewhere because there's so many different companies, you know what I'm saying? That sell wigs that you can get yourself a really nice wig for like 125 bucks and do something to it to make it look just as nice as this one. Like, sir, I mean, like, listen, I didn't just take this out the box and put it on and it looked like this on the edges. I did have to customize it to my liking you know what i'm saying i had to pluck some of the hairs and shit i had to bleach the frontal of it i mean the, the part of it because it's a full lace i had to bleach it because you know i still did see the knots so i mean that's still there so it's still things that i have to do to it so if i have to do certain things then i want to pay cheaper and like i have so many different websites on my youtube channel that cater to like budget friendly wigs that are really nice like i like budget friendly it's just hair it's just fucking hair you can get it anywhere so why pay like a couple hundred more when you can get them for like a hundred bucks like seriously you guys like so i'm thinking like maybe i should do like a video that's just dedicated to just one video that's just dedicated to all the vendors that i've dealt with that have wigs under like 200 and under you know lace wigs human hair of course and the quality is really good you know what i'm saying and i could just put like a little list together and that's something that i'm going to do today i'm going to put a little list together i'm going to have to go through my videos and see which ones are worth it because i can always tell you know which ones are really worth it and some of them like you know regardless of what when i say really worth it like you know you're still going to have to customize it but if you have to bleach the knots and you have to tweeze a little bit of the hair that's fine. But if you have to do those same things to a wig that's like four or five hundred dollars, that's just doing too much. I, if I'm paying that much, bitch, I don't want to do a goddamn thing, but just cut the lace off and go. Bet, better yet, I want the lace to be cut off for me and I want to just put it on and go straight up bottom line. So let me know how you guys feel about that. So other than that, <clears throat> nothing major. Um, trying to think. 
uh, next month I leave again to go to New York um, for my grandson's baby shower because I'm having another grandchild and it turns out to be a boy. His name is Julius. Julius. And I have to think of a middle name. Julius. Okay. And I said to my son, that sounds like a really nice name for a kid that's good. I said, you're starting off good because your other son, JJ, which is Jerron, um, he's just Jerron Jr. I love my grandson to death. He's five, but that little motherfucker is bad. Okay. He's bad. So I said, okay, Julius is a nice name. Um, but that's for a good kid. And hopefully he stays that way. And like my son said, I hope the same. And, um, we are just going to try to think of a nice middle name that will go with Julius slash Furman. Okay. Julius slash Furman. We'll see. If you guys come up with anything, let me know. I need a nice name, nice middle name for my grandson. Grandson. Okay. That goes with Julius. Julius space Furman. Whatever his middle name is going to be, that's the space. Okay. So other than that, that's really nothing new. I spoke to my mom. She got to see one of my subscribers at her job at Burlington um, in uh, New York. Um, it actually was a young lady, Bridget, who I met at RPG Show's meet and greet in last year of October. So that was really cool. And Bridget was messaging me too, telling me about it, which was really cool. And also I have to send a special thank you and shout out to one of my subscribers. So, um, but she's not, you, she's a subscriber, but she's also a friend. You know, I consider you guys as a friend to me. So keep that in mind. You guys are, I wish they had a button that says friend me, not subscribe. So, but you know, so Bridget is so cool. She, she watches, my, I'm not Bridget, excuse me, Sanja. Sanja is so cool. She watches my videos and, um, she noticed how pissed off I was about that hot comb that I had purchased from Walmart. You guys always hear me complain about it because, you know, it gets hot, but it doesn't get hot enough. And I just really didn't like the where the off on and off switch was. It was just like this issue. Well, she sends me one and I don't have it right now because it's in the bathroom with my other styling suits. But she sent me an Annie hot comb, the large size. And all you got to do is switch it on. It doesn't even have a heat control. It goes to 500, okay, which was amazing. I was so happy with it. I had it in my video that I posted on Monday. Um, I was using it and I loved it. I loved it. But she sent me some other nice little gifts in this cute box. Okay, so listen, I like boxes like this. I do. I have some um, over there in the corner. I like decorative boxes, not like the boxes that your wigs come in. But she sent me some really nice stuff and I just wanted to say thank you so much. She sent me a card and she and I have both been going to the dentist to get our teeth fixed. So, you know, that is like really cool. I had to tell her, you better go ahead, girl. But she kind of didn't want to go that one day and I told she better go. But this is the packaging that it came in. I was so impressed. I really do like this one a lot now. Like this is like, what's up? Don't burn yourself because it does get really, really hot in case you guys are wondering. She sent me some lashes, a pair of earrings with my initial on them, okay? Some earrings, some hoop earrings, because everybody knows I like wearing hoop earrings, but they have different sizes, and the biggest size, you know, I really wanted to wear these, like, a long time ago, um, before this, like, this size, particular size earring, okay? I wanted to wear this particular size earrings because I see so many girls, um, women, girls, you know, wearing this particular size hoop. And I get kind of upset because I can't pull it off. I got to go up a couple of sizes because it's um, my neck is not long enough. I, I mean, I got a neck now, you know, because I did lose some weight. So I do have a neck now. But um, my neck was just never long enough for these and still isn't. I mean, I, I'm not going to grow a neck unfortunately, but I always wanted to wear like these ones. These might be a little bit bigger than the ones that I actually wanted, but yeah, yeah. if you don't have a neck, you can't wear these, but it comes with three different sizes. So hello, I could just go to the next size. That's a little bit smaller. And um, this is more or less for me. This is my size right here, these ones. So these ones right here work perfect for me. I don't know. I just love a good hoop earring. Okay. 
I love a good hoop earring. So she sent me those and I was so happy. Also, it's funny because I told her I was going to do my nails and I have so many different nails to do, but I was going to look for some new ones and I never even used the old ones. She sent me these, okay? And they are the pointy ones at the end, which I love. Hello, I was needing a dome cap, okay? And she sent that. She sent me these for my contact lenses, and I actually did need a couple more of these, so that was a cool thing. And she sent me a fan. Hold on. How do you do this? I want to do this the cool way. Let's see. How do they do this? Hmm. Uh, I guess I'm not cool enough, but... You know, when they be just like fanning themselves and it opens up, okay? It just opens up on its own, like, you know, let me see. How do you do that? Well, I, I, I'll try. I'll just try a little bit harder. But she sent me one of these because I'm so damn hot. I need to fan myself off. Cool down. Mm. So thank you so much, Sandra, because I love everything in this box. It all was useful. And listen, I do get hot sitting up in this damn room with these lights on. So if y'all see me fanning myself off, y'all already know why. It's because I'm literally hot. Not like, ooh, sexy hot, but I'm literally like freaking hot. So yes, I wanted to say thank you for that because I really do appreciate it. I was so excited. I was like so excited about this. So I've been using it and abusing it, like not in a bad way of using it, but I've been using it a lot. So it definitely came in handy. And I wanted to do a video doing my nails. So I'm going to get around to that. It's just every time I want to do it, I got to make a wig. So it's like, okay. But other than that, you guys, everything is all cool. So we're going to get into this real talk real quick. If you have a real talk that you want me to do or you want to dish up the tea or talk about somebody, you always send me a real um, an email, excuse me, to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to post in the subject line of the email, real talk. So that way when I'm searching on my email, I can search up real talk and it will pop up. And if you want to change the names of the people you are talking about or yourself, please let me know. Hey, April, I want ahead and change the names and if you don't i'll 99.9% .9 of the time change it on my own like you know maury says 99.9% .9 you are the baby daddies yes you guys are so let's get into this real talk and my email address is actually in the description all right you guys so um names have been changed hi april i wrote to you before about my daughter and her mental illness my husband and i are trying to get her to be independent and i do remember her i do remember the story but my daughter name We'll call her Darla because I can't remember the names I gave you before, LOL. Well, just recently, Darla turns 18, so legally she is considered an adult. Well, she has been diagnosed as having schizoaffective disorder. She, met, she has met a few boys via social media and has been very secretive about, excuse me, hold on. Well, she has met a few boys via social media and has been very secretive about because her dad and I just want to protect her in the long run. It's too many crazy people out here. Well, just let me go back just a little bit, okay? When she was in high school, she had a friend that I let her hang out with. And I thought I could just, you know, well, let her hang out with her. Well, she left the house and she told me the girl, her friend's dad's girlfriend, so... Darla told her mom that she was going to hang out with her friend and that her friend's father's girlfriend was picking them up. And I was cool with that because she didn't have many friends anyway. But on with the story. She went then, she went, then me and my husband got a phone call from the police officer saying my daughter has been in an accident and her and her friend was with a pedophile. So the police brought my, my daughter home, and I was beyond upset. So that was the first incident. The second, she was talking to this boy, she says, for a while, but never said anything to her father and I. 
In April, we don't mind her having a boyfriend, but we know her mental state. But anyway, so she asked me, Ma, can I go over my aunt's house and spend time with my cousin? Mind you, April, this cousin that Darla, my daughter, is speaking of never wants to bother with my daughter. Well, I told her no. So we went to the store. So, well, I told her no. So instead, we went shopping. We went to the store, ran some errands and whatnot. And then the aunt picks her up. I was in the house. The aunt didn't come in the house to ask if I was okay, how was I doing, that she was here to pick her up. She just picked her up and left without saying anything to me, without coming in the house, without saying, hey, girl, how you doing? I'm here to pick Darla up. She just probably beeped the horn or called Darla, I'm outside, and they just left. So I was pissed. So some time goes by, and I called the aunt and said, Darla with you? And she says, no, I dropped her off at some address we aren't familiar with. Long story short, we were looking for Darla, my daughter, for a long time. Called the police, trying to find her. We was out there for three hours or more in the cold until I seen Darla walking down the street with some boy that we found out was the cousin of the boy she was sneaking to go see. She's very compulsive in the decisions she makes. So now, okay, she has all of a sudden made another met another boy on social media asking me can I go hang out with him April we know we don't know this boy she shows me a picture of the boy ma this is what he looks like I'm looking at her like I don't care about what he looks like we haven't met him and people can be whoever they want to be on social media I'm just saying she got so angry and then start saying I hate you I don't get to do anything my question April is are we wrong as parents to try to protect her still? I know she is 18, but mentally she doesn't understand that. And she doesn't understand what's going on in this world. We are getting guardianship over her until we feel she would be okay to do things on her own. I just get so frustrated dealing with, with a child with mental disabilities. It's so hard. I'm sorry this is so long, but it's too long. If it's too long, you can write me back via email. <coughs> Excuse me. I appreciate all your advice. I love your blogs with your family, especially Mr. Tinky Man. Any advice you give me is so much appreciated. Thanks again. So, as you guys have heard, Darla is 18. Darla is, we're going to just call her Tammy. Tammy's daughter. And Tammy and her husband are still together, which is Darla's father. Darla's 18, but she has a mental disorder, which is schizoaffective disorder. I'm not really sure what schizoaffective is. I know schizophrenia, but I'm not really sure what schizoaffective is. Let me just look it up real quick and see. Okay, so I looked it up on Google. Schiz schizoaffective disorder is a chronic mental health condition characterized primarily by symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations or delusions and symptoms of a mood disorder, such as mania and depression. Okay, many people with schizoaffective disorder are often incorrectly diagnosed at first with bipolar disorder or schizophrenia because it shares symptoms of multiple mental health conditions. Um, because the schizoaffective disorder is less well studied than the other two conditions, many interventions are borrowed from their treatment approaches. Um, schizoaffective disorder is seen in about 0.3% of the population. Men and women experience schizoaffective disorder at the same rate, but men often develop the illness at an earlier age. Schizoaffective disorder can be managed effectively with medication and therapy. Co-occurring substances, substances such as disorders, are a serious risk and require integrated treatment. So, you know, the symptoms are hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking, depressed mood, manic behavior. Um, and it's a sign, it's like a part of the schizophrenic, schizophrenia family. So that is what Darla has, okay? So she does have a mental illness. And so basically she cannot really think for herself in like a... A normal state of mind so the father and mother are protective over her we are protective over our children regardless if they have any type of illness that's just what we do as parents but Darla does not understand and that's part of her you know 
illness. She's not really understanding that the world can be such a horrible place. And she's meeting these young boys online. She didn't meet one. She lied to her mom and said she was going to hang out with, you know, her friend and her friend's father's girlfriend was coming to pick them up, et cetera, et cetera, probably bring them back to the house. And in return, police call her and say, your daughter and her friend were actually hanging out with a pedophile. Okay. Then the second go around, she's telling her auntie, hey, come pick me up. Not really sure what she told her, but the aunt comes and picks her up and drops her off at some strange delusional house. First of all, I think that was dead ass wrong because as a aunt, a family member, and as an adult, you could at least come inside and say, hey girl, what you, how are you doing to the parent of Darla? That's Darla's aunt. That means we're family. Regardless if it's through, through my husband, we're, we're family. So she didn't come inside and say hello to Darla's mother. She just probably beat the horn and said, come on, let's go. Now, first of all, why would you not go inside? Because if you receive a call from somebody like somebody else's kid can you bring me here you wouldn't question that because i know as a parent i'd be like oh, why would they ask you to bring them when i got a car okay there's two people in the household so i'm pretty sure somebody has a car and you can't take her hmm let me see what's really good that's just me and not everybody is like that um and then the third time she asked her mom about you know can she hang out with some boy? She met him online. This is what he looks like. Let me tell you, just like her mother said, people can be whoever they want to be on social media. They can use somebody else's picture. They can say they're a lawyer when they work at fast food restaurants. You know what I'm saying? They can say they ain't never been to jail when they asked, just came home from jail for murdering six people or God knows what, okay? So do I think she's wrong or they're wrong as parents? Not at all. I be telling y'all this, and y'all know I be telling y'all this on several occasions, that all these online social media sites and shit like that where y'all meet people and go out on dates, y'all have to be very, very, very leery about it. I tell y'all this all the time because there are some strange motherfuckers out there. Like, there are some weirdos out in this world. Whether you guys think it or not or believe it or not, there are some really weird people. And you know what? That's just what make the world go round, regardless. Like, if you had all normal people, then the world would just probably not be the world. It would probably be some dull, boring place. Not saying that I would like to have crime and weirdos walking around me, but it would also be a lot more peaceful probably as well. But a lot of times on social media, when you meet these guys and stuff, like, dude, why you can't just meet a girl in person? You want to spend all your time on social media like that show Catfish. So you going to catfish me for like 10 years? I'm just saying me because I'm just using it as an example. In 10 years, too. I have never been catfished. I don't even deal with that shit. I did do an online dating thing once, you know, and it was like, the it wasn't the worst for God, you know, like, okay. It wasn't for me. But... You know, even in general, when somebody's standing in your face and speaking with you, they can tell you whatever the fuck they think you want to hear. They're lying. They're scamming. They're lying. It's all kind of people. Even in person, you meet those who lie and say there's something that they're not. On social media, it, it just gets a little bit carried away more and more. You meet these people. You think you're meeting this person, and then when you finally do meet them, they're total opposite of what you thought you were attracted to. They could be a crazy person. So you're not wrong. As an adult, you're definitely not wrong. And even if it is your child who is 18, regardless, mental health issue or not, you're definitely not wrong. We have to protect our loved ones. Social media has gotten so blown out of proportion that it's unfortunate. You know, like I'm not against social media. Trust me, because I like I like it. I'm th I don't love it. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want to spend my time on Facebook, and that's what I don't understand how people sit on Facebook all day. Like, why do you want to scroll all day long? Like, I don't care about that shit or Instagram or. Um, Twitter or Snapchat. You know, I get a lot of people say, why don't you do Snapchat? Because I don't have time to be holding up my phone all day. Like, look, guys, look what I'm doing. I'm brushing my teeth or I'm brushing my hair. Like, that's one thing that I'm not going to do. I mean, like, if I do Snapchat, then I do, which is very rare, very blue moon. It has to be. I'm, I'm not really into sitting on social media and scrolling all day, like seriously. Like even with my own comments, it's hard sometimes for me to reply back to a lot of comments because I don't want to be on social media all the time. And YouTube is like a social media also. So 
if I don't reply to a comment, it's not that I feel like I don't have to. It's just that I really try to steer away from that a lot because I do have a family. You know what I'm saying? I'd be so busy doing things with my kids and my family and just making wigs and things like that and working on my videos that, you know, it cuts out a lot of my time. But I understand that a lot of people like to be on social media and it is a great way to network. But certain things you have to take into consideration when it comes to social media. Okay. Certain things you have to take into consideration with social media. You don't want to go on there and start making plans to date people that you've never even met in person. I mean, people do say a lot of good things that you want to hear, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm let's be serious. If some guy met you on social media and he was like, yeah, I look like Biz Markie, I'm butt ugly, or I look like Flavor Flav, I'm butt ugly. All right. I ain't got no job. I'm a crackhead and I live on my mother's couch. Would you really want to date him? And give him any of your time on social media. Like, the first thing you would probably do is block the motherfucker. Like, seriously. Because if somebody wrote me that shit, like, hey, you gorgeous. You know, I'm a crackhead. Whatever. I'll block. i block you anyway when you try to start talking to me about, yo, what's good? Like, I'll block you because, first of all, I got a man. Second of all, if I didn't have one, please don't irritate me by sending me no fucking DMs. Because, dude, um, I ain't got time for that shit. But, you know what I'm saying? Let's be realistic. Like, when... You meet someone on social media, they're not going to tell you that they look like an ass monkey. They're not going to tell you that they ain't got no money. They broke, homeless broke. They're not going to tell you that they live on somebody's couch. They're not going to tell you that they a drug addict. They're not going to tell you none of this. They're not going to tell you anything negative about themselves, okay? So that's the one thing that you have to take into consideration. And sending a photo of yourself to someone is like irrelevant nowadays because, I've had this one girl named Keisha Knowles, whoever she is, she stole all my pictures and put them on her Facebook. And everybody was like, it was like several people that told me, many people that told me like, yo, this girl or whoever this person is, is using all your photos. Like whenever I would put a photo up, this bitch would put a photo up. And she actually would like converse back and forth with people on her Facebook page as me. Like, bitch, why do you want to be me? Like, you don't even know how my life is. And just like her mom says, Darla's mom says, Tammy, people could be whoever they want to be on social media, which is so true. So like, you want to be me on social media? Why would you want to be me? You don't really even know my true life. Like, you know, I share a lot with you guys, but I don't want to share everything. Like, I'm not going to tell you guys, oh, I'm constipated. Oh, I got into an argument with one of my kids or, you know, I'm just using all those as examples or, oh, I don't go to bed till three o'clock in the morning because I've been working so late. Like, you know, you don't see me get up in the morning looking like shit. You don't see me. So I'm not going to share everything with you guys because it just be just the most. But People could be whoever they want to be on social media. And I'm just like, why would you want to be me? I have five kids and I've had issues in my own life. Why the fuck would you want to be me? But that goes to show you that people in general don't want to be them own, their own selves on social media. And I don't understand why. Why do you want to be something other than you? What do you get out of that? That's like with pictures when they're filtered. Some people be over filtering them so much that they start looking animated in the photo and got the nerve to post the shit up like, bitch, you look like a cartoon damn near. And I know a few YouTubers that have animated their filtered their pictures so fucking much. And then when you watch their video, like, bitch, you don't even look like that in the video of the makeup tutorial you just did. But your face is so flawless. Not even flawless. I'm using the wrong word. Um, your face is so, I can't even say perfect because I can look at it and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one and tell that it's so over filtered that your neck is damn near fading. Your, your chin area is fading. It doesn't go with your neck. So like I said, people can be all types of shit on social media. They could be prettier than what they are. They can be nicer than what they are. They can do they can be leg more legal than what they aren't, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really think that she's wrong about it at all. Like, serious. Um, my opinion, 
I know that she has a mental illness. I understand that. But everyone can learn to sit down and have a conversation with one another. And I say this because Darla is feeling like her parents don't want her to do anything. She's 18. You know, basically, this is how she's feeling. And in my opinion, she can be able, she, Darla is able to sit and have a conversation because if you can sit on social media and talk back and forth with a, a young man, then you can definitely sit on the couch at home and have a conversation about life. So me personally, Tammy, I really think that you should have a conversation with Darla, you and your husband, and maybe not so much your husband, even though he is the father. And I feel like it would be great to have you both there. But I noticed that sometimes girls or females are more expressive with their mother versus their father, because it's like a girl thing. It's kind of like a female thing. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> Me personally, I would really have a conversation with her, a good conversation, and let her know the do's and the don'ts of social media, and let her know the reasons why you and her father are so protective over her due to social media. And what I would do if I were you, I would look up ahead of time of crimes, crimes that happen through via social media. Like I know there was the Craigslist, Craigslist guy that... <clears throat> was luring women to his apartment. I'm not sure if it was to purchase something or what I think it was, but he was raping them. There's probably more than just him, okay? But um, I would definitely look up incidents that happen through social media and because of social media, you know. Um, also, I would let her watch the show Catfish because that's like a really good show. I mean, it's not really a good, really good show, but to me, I find it, good because it allows you to see what people will really do and the extreme that they will go in order to hide and shield who they really are just to be able to speak with someone or be in a relationship with someone. And so I find like in an educational kind of way, Catfish is really good because it gives you all these warning signs and it allows you to watch the show and see what all these other people are going through to make that decision for yourself. Like, bitch, I don't want to go through none of that shit. Let me not online date no more. I'm not even going to online date at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like that about Catfish. Like there's probably, I've watched every single season in like a two weeks time frame, okay, on on um Hulu, yes. And I've never watched it until just recently because it's not my thing, you know. That's an MTV show. I'm 44 years old, so when it first came out, I was still a little bit too old for it. Have my space, you know. I was too old for my space. Not not maybe not too old, but you know, when I did watch it, it just brought like so much enlightenment to my to me like wow people really go through this or wow people really put up with this or wow people are really doing this shit and I'm like dang this is not worth it why do people put themselves through this and so to me it wasn't like entertainment it was kind of like you know I'm learning something even though I already knew that but you know you learn other things that you didn't know about social media or you didn't know that people are doing so if I were you I would definitely let her Watch the show. It's on Hulu. You can watch it or you can watch it probably online if you don't have Hulu. And let her watch the Catfish show. It might be entertaining to her, but I guarantee you after watching like quite some episodes, she'll be like, damn, because that's how I was. In the beginning, it was very entertaining. I was like, oh my God, this motherfucker is ass monkey ugly. And this poor bitch done wasted six years of her life on this man that she didn't know was, excuse me, not even a man, this fucking female. So she, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, so she portrayed herself as a man, but when the person finally met her, she was a female, a big ass monkey, ugly female. Like she was gay, but she, she could have passed for a guy too, but see what I'm saying? And you fall in love with someone that you've never met, which I find um, just like ridiculous. How the fuck do you fall in love with somebody you've never even met in person? Like, I don't know to each his own, but I would definitely have her watch that. And I would also definitely look up incidents due to someone meeting on social media and what happened to them. I would, I would do that. And I would also have a long conversation with her because she doesn't understand. And I get that, but you can make her understand to a point, you know what I'm saying? 
it's dangerous on social media. It's dangerous out there. You don't know who the fuck you meet in, okay? That's just like me. I take a gift, like, you know, those mystery boxes that you can buy, like, on eBay. You don't know what the fuck you get in. You could get all types of garbage. You just wasted your money and time on some shit that you don't even know what you get in. And me, honestly, personally... I'm not one big on surprises. Like, I'm I'm over all the surprise shit. I'm 44 years old. I don't need no motherfucking surprises. Tell me what the fuck you about to do so I can prepare myself. Even if it's a good thing, bitch, tell me what the fuck you want to do. Because I don't really want to know about no surprises. I don't want to be having sitting up here so shocked and happy that I fucking pass the fuck out or have a heart attack or nothing like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really be big on surprises. And to me, online dating or meeting people on social media and then going up to meet with them in person, that's like some surprise because i might be really surprised if you turn up looking ass monkey ugly okay and then i might be really surprised if you're a pedophile she's already ran into a pedophile this is what i'm talking about like weirdos weirdos not not everybody is a weirdo that be on social media that want to meet with somebody but i would just say half of the population is okay i'm gonna just say half i really want to say more but i could be wrong so i'm gonna just say half of the population is fucking weirdos that be on social media trying to reach out to people like go to the bar go to a restaurant go somewhere meet club where wherever meet someone at least you get to see if they butt ass ugly even if they got on a whole face full of makeup even though that doesn't work all the time but it may work better than social media you know what i'm saying so i don't think she's wrong at all i just think that there's just a different approach that she needs to take with this young lady and if you guys have suggestions of what she can do for like the social media or you know how she should handle it i would love for you guys to post your input down below and you know so that way she could read it so you guys on to the next one my mouth is so dry okay so this one is an update as um this one here is an update as well because um i have three of them and they're all basically the same not the same person but from repeat um repeat offenders. <laughs> okay. Hey, April, it's sunshine again. I wanted to thank you and all the divas and devos for all the advice and support. I want to give you an, I wanted to give you all an update on my last real talk in July. I kept the names the same as the last real talk. Just to jog your memory. I talked about Kristen, my mom, um, my mom, and I have, um, I have talked about Kristen and I having more of a sibling relationship because she was a teen mom, which is her mom. Her, Kristen is her mom. Okay. So Kristen is her mom. Okay. So I spoke about Kristen and I having more of a sibling relationship because my mom was a teen mom. My mom was married twice and now in a relationship with an, with a user and abuser. Her first husband was verbally abusive and her second husband was verbally and emotionally abusive. The guy she's dating now is verbally and emotionally abusive. Now to the update. I don't know if you guys remember, but hopefully I'll remember to link the video below. Now to the update. I ended up taking my mom, Kristen, out to lunch and just spending, spending the day with her. I did talk to her about Dylan, who's, you know, Dylan is her mom's boyfriend, and how I felt he was using her and verbally and mentally abusive to her. I kept reiterating to her that I wasn't saying I didn't want her to be alone or that I was upset she was in a relationship. I was upset that she keeps this pattern of entering into these cycles of abusive relationships. This is what I was trying to explain to her. I gave her all the examples of her choices that I've experienced with her over the last 30 plus years. I told her that I love her and I worry about her because I've watched her push me and my siblings to the side all over a man for years and lose everything for the sake of them, only for them to do her dirty and for her to need her support system, which is us. She ditched us all over again. I told her I want to see her happy and with a man that adds value to her life. I want to see her with a man that adores her, appreciates her, and genuinely loves her. The conversation ended with her making excuses for him like she did for the other men. So I'm not going to lie. I got annoyed when she bought a new car and had to have my grandfather co-sign for the car. Dylan, her boyfriend, took her to pick up the car. Now, when they first started talking, he was all up in her business about her credit and all this because he didn't want to be in a bad financial situation. 
Mind you, this dude is in his 50s, 50s, working part-time and a fake weed dealer and in school working on his master's, allegedly. Sounds to me he was just making sure he had a good enough sucker. He claims she, she can't use, he claims, oh, excuse me, my mom claims he can't use her for anything because she doesn't have anything. And he knew that she didn't have anything. I told her then she had a damn fool. I told her then she's a damn fool for choosing someone that ain't got shit. And obviously you got more than him if he laying up in your shit, eating your food and dropping you off in your own damn car to work. Oh, yeah. So I told her, let me get this straight. He's such a great guy and there for you. But when it's time to handle business, you still have to call your father, mom. What is he going what is he doing for you but leaving you with a wet ass? The condo <clears throat> the condo she lives in is in my grandfather's name. My grandfather still helps her pay her bills and does everything for my siblings. My grandfather has completely enabled her, but that's another story for another day. I straight asked her, what's the point in laying up with some dude if you still have to depend on your father for your necessities? What part of the game is this? She claimed she was going to take my words into consideration and taper and taper it down. I told her, no, you need to cut that shit off. Anyway, I found out when I was when I went to get my brother for our movie date tonight that she's now added him to her car insurance, meaning Dylan, her boyfriend, so he can drive legally. <clears throat> I told her she's dumb and I'm done doing this with her. I told her when he uses her up like the rest and kills her self-esteem even further, I won't be there to help repair and pick shit up just so she can throw me and our relationship away for the next piece of dick she meets. I'm getting off the ride and she can stay on it. I've come to the conclusion that I'm not wasting any more of my time and energy on relationships that bring me negativity. Even that includes, even the ones that include my mom. When she's single, she wants to have a relationship with us. And when she's with a bum, she talks about me like I ain't shit to them and distance herself as well. I, can be, I can't be turned off and on, so I'm out. Probably not the update y'all was hoping for, but it's an update. Thanks again, Auntie April. Love, Sunshine. So, you know, I do like to hear happy endings, but I guess that's not the case. But in a, in a way, it is kind of a happy ending because Sunshine is just going to leave her mom the fuck alone. This is what I be telling y'all. I just said that people will come in your face and lie and tell you that you want to hear. So unfortunately for Sunshine, her mother, who is a grown ass woman, and Sunshine is too, her mother has dated and been married to two men that have been verbally and mentally abusive to her. And now she's with some bum ass old 50 year old who is working part-time, and is a fake weed de dealer. First of all, when you're in your 50s, you should not be selling weed. You should not be even selling motherfucking candy on the street. Don't sell nothing, okay? And when you're 50, you should have a job. I don't give a fuck if it's at the grocery store. You should have a job, not being trying to be a uh, trap lord for the weeds community. Like, there's people, there's young kids that can sell the weed. Like, this is the part that I just failed to realize. <laughs> And it's, it's, why do older men like in my age group or above still feel like they can sell drugs? Like, first of all, dude, your knees is probably going to give out on you. So how are you going to run from the police? Okay. And do you really want to bend and cough butt ass naked in front of a whole bunch of young thugs? This, these men be like in their fifties and above trying to sell weed. Like why the fuck? Listen, old timer, sit your ass the fuck down somewhere. Okay. Like seriously. And it's so sad because you see them and they try to like relive their youth. Like, dude, like I'm not saying go ahead and sell drugs, but you could have did that in your, your earlier years. Like you 50, you should have yourself established. And so that's the thing. You don't have yourself established because you're selling weed. You're a fake weed dealer. And I'm pretty sure she sees, says fake weed dealer because he ain't really no weed dealer like that. He probably don't even got no customers. He probably got like one or two customers, you know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure like he smokes weed himself because normally if you're a weed dealer, you smoke it too. So he doesn't have a real job because he works part-time. This is Sunshine's mom. Uh, 
Um, he doesn't have his own place because he's eating up her shit and laying up in her bed. Nor his own fucking ride. That shit could be a huffy bike. I don't give a fuck. You don't have your own ride because you are dropping your girlfriend off in her car that her father had to co-sign. Let me tell you something. First of all, I don't let nobody fuck with my shit. Like, you're not about to be dropping me the fuck off to work so that you could just go do whatever the fuck you want in my shit. First of all, you couldn't even say, hey, can I borrow your car? I know you ain't got nothing to do today. You probably could be home all day. Nah. You're not even borrowing my shit. I can't allow that. No. I, I, I'm just a paranoid person. I don't need you getting into no accident or nothing like that. Like, no, no. Mm -mm. You need to go somewhere? Okay. Even my son, he's asked me, and I don't know why he's asked me this, because he's asked me this before and I told him no. But he asked me, could he, he, could he drive my car? And I was like, what? Yeah, could I, I just want to go down the street and, and get something from the store. I was like, no. Well, I'm coming right back. No. Ma. Not to drive. No, you're not driving my motherfucking car. I gave you my Tahoe. You didn't even act right with that. Why the fuck would I drive? Why would I allow you to drive down the street in my shit? Like, get out your mind. Boy, no. Boy, bye. Why the fuck would you even ask me that? But her mom is in a situation where she's got a deadbeat. A deadbeat boyfriend who is mooching off of her. And her mom really thinks that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, if I ain't got shit, then he ain't using me. Let me tell you something. If I ain't got shit, nigga, I don't need you coming and staying with me and you ain't got shit. We don't need to be two people that ain't got shit together. We can't even put shit together and make something of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And like, so Sunshine has just been irritated and aggravated and stressed out about it. And so she's finally had to talk with her mom. Like, listen, open your eyes the fuck up. This is what's going on. You got somebody who ain't worth shit who's using you, who drives around in your car, who eats your shit up, who lays up with you, but leaves you with a wet ass. Oh, I, maybe I'll just taper down on it. No, like she said, maybe you should just leave it alone. But you know something? You cannot continuously tell somebody something that's going to better themselves. If they ain't trying to hear you, they ain't trying to hear you. You can sit there until you blue, green, purple, I don't care what fucking color you turn in the face and try to beat them down with information or knowledge they're not trying to hear you until they're trying to do the shit on their own. That's just like, okay, you know a friend and she's in an abusive relationship and she's been in this relationship for four years, okay? We're just going to say four years. And you constantly talking to her about it. She's constantly coming to you crying about it. And you constantly giving your opinions and feelings about it. But she is doing nothing to change that. And you, and not only just you, but you, maybe her family members and other friends are also like telling her, listen, girl, this is not for you. And she's sitting there. She's like, I know you're right. I need to get out of this. But what does she do? She didn't talk to you about this situation probably like 10, 20 times already. Not this same situation, but different situations. Like, oh, he punched me in my face then. He, he kicked me in my back then. She's come to you like 10 different times with 10 different issues of that, what her so-called lover or boyfriend is doing to her, beating on her. And she still goes back. Honey, it don't matter how much you talk to them, how many examples you show them, how many situations you may show them. They're not going to be able to understand and they're not going to get it until they have had enough. You know, they can finally say, I'm done with this and I'm not dealing with this anymore. And that's just not with abusive relationships. That can be with just about anything. That could be like with work. You can go to work and somebody's taking advantage of you, making you do all the work while they just sit there and just look on the internet about things that they want to buy and shop. Meanwhile, you're doing all the work and you keep doing this. As long as you keep putting up with it, it's going to keep happening. You have to get to a point where it's like, I've had enough. And like sometimes when you're in a negative relationship or a negative situation, it does affect the people that are close to you and around you. And so it's affecting sunshine. And the only thing that she can do now is to pull herself away from it. And that's the only thing you can do. Your mother is a grown ass woman. And if you've explained this to her time and time again, and your siblings have explained this to her time and time again, then there's nothing else that you can do, but just leave her the fuck alone and allow her to figure this shit out on her own. Yes, yeah, she's been married once and then twice and the same issue but you know what some people like a man with a challenge 
Some people like a man that they feel like they can mold and change him. But, bitch, you have to start off somewhere by changing him, like telling him you need to take your ass and find your own place or get off my couch. You need to get a job and you need to get your own car. You're not driving my shit. But as long as she enables him, then that's what's going to happen. So the best thing for you to do is to walk away. Now, mind you, you said you're not going to be there to pick the pieces up. I know that's a lie because if something was to happen to your mom, you're definitely going to be there for her and you're definitely going to offer, I'm still trying to flip this damn fam, you're definitely going to offer her your condolences or, you know, whatever support or anything like that. But I can totally understand to the point where, you know what, I have to back off. And that's exactly what you have to do. That's just like me with my son, uh, Wuzzle, we call him Wuzzle. After a while, I get tired of telling him the same thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just get tired of it. And I, you know, it's just like, you know what, April? Just stop. Just stop and just let him learn on his own. And that's what I had to do. I had to let him learn on his own. You keep doing this and keep doing that, you're going to get in trouble. Okay? But you don't want to listen to me. And I guess I'm just talking out of my ass. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about because I'm older. And I had to allow him to just get himself in trouble. Now what? My son is on probation. And you have stopped the bullshit somewhat. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It's like you can't keep telling a person something. They have to go through something really traumatic in order to, for them to finally wake up and say, you know what? I'm, I, I just can't anymore. And I just can't. I really just fucking can't. And it's the same thing with your mom. The only thing for you to do is to walk away because you're just going to stress yourself the fuck out. And that's exactly what the fuck I was doing with my son Wuzzle. So I had to leave him alone and let him learn on his own. You know, as family and as a person, as a human being, we do try to help those that we see that are on the wrong road, the wrong path, because we don't want them to suffer in any type of way. But there are some that don't even want to help themselves and you can't help them. If you're not willing to help yourself, then we cannot help you as a person or a friend or a family member. And honestly, the best thing for you, Sunshine, to do is to walk away. And unfortunately, it wasn't a good ending, but at least you will have a stable mind. And I know in the back of your mind, you're still going to worry about your mother and I get that and I understand that because she's your mom, regardless if she's doing right or wrong. And you're still going to be there if she calls and reaches out to you like, oh my God, it's over between us or whatever, you know, you're still going to do that. But I can totally understand that you're really upset and you know something you have every right to be, but you cannot let somebody else's misery fuck up your rainbow. Okay, that's what I be saying sometimes. Because rainbow is like happy colors, you know what I'm saying? And so if somebody's misery, I don't, that's why I listen. I don't really deal with a lot of people because there's too much negativity in the world. I'm not saying everybody is like that, but I just, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't have time for drama. I just like to avoid drama because for one, I know what type of person I am. You know what I'm saying? I do know that I'm a person that can overreact sometimes if I don't think about it. And I don't really want to go back to jail. Like I have been there already and I don't want to go back to jail for my irrational behavior due to your dumb fucking drama ass queen fucking ass. So that's the reason why I like to stay away from a lot of drama because I'm just too grown. I'm too mature for that. And I know what type of person I am. I just don't deal with a lot of shit really well. So I kind of like steer clear of a lot of shit. And that is drama. That's drama written. All that shit right there is just drama, just drama. And it gives me a headache. And I feel like this life is short. You might not think it is, but that shit could be over in a matter of time. You don't, you don't have no age of what you're guaranteed to live to and life is short. So when you realize that as you get older, that, you know, I need to enjoy my life as much as possible. Stop being mean and rude and nasty to people and, you know, and just stupid or just, you know, shit like that. And I'm saying that's me, but I'm just saying in general. But when you mature, you learn to realize like, okay, let me let me chill on my temper. Because I have chilled a lot, okay? Because before I just not, me, not having it. But I have chilled a lot. I'm still like, I get rowdy. I will get rowdy with a motherfucker. But sometimes I just walk away from the bullshit. Like if I see somebody running off at the mouth, well, you ain't about to run off at the mouth to me. 
But, you know, a lot of times, like, I'm very confrontational. And sometimes I just have to walk away from that, especially, like, at stores, you know, like cashiers. They might be rude or tell you something snooty or, you know, like, do shit on purpose. Like, you standing on the line for five minutes. And then as soon as you get up, you turn the light off and say, I'm closed. Like, bitch, you're going to take me because I've had that happen to me on a couple occasions. And I've had to say, oh, you're not closed until you finish ringing me out. All right. You're going to take me because you see me standing here for five motherfucking minutes and you're going to take me. OK, while you was talking to your friend and meet a meet a language, you're going to take me. That was just the incident that I had at Walmart. OK, no, bitch, you're taking me today. I don't give a fuck. And you want to call the manager over. Bitch, you could have just rang me the fuck out for all of that. And so it's shit like that where I have to just kind of like walk away sometimes. But then sometimes it's like, not today. You really not about to play me. But what I'm saying is drama will follow you regardless. You have to just learn to let some people go and leave them the fuck alone. Okay? Because it's just chaotic. Nobody needs chaos. And it might be your mom and it might be your dad and your sister, but regardless of how much you talk to them, they're not going to change until they're ready to change. Straight up, bottom line, no chaser, point blank, period. So you did the right thing. She will come back around and maybe one day, hopefully, and eventually she'll get it together and she'll realize what the fuck you were saying along with your siblings, you know. Listen, people, I was going to do three, but I think I've been on here long enough, okay? And I really didn't want to make it, like, too long. But I do want to say this. Just be aware of your surroundings. You know, if you guys want to do online social media dating, then that's on you. I'm not judging you, but be aware of your surroundings. Be aware, be very aware of who you're dealing with. Maybe you might want to jot some questions down and or when they're talking with you on the phone, just take notes. I mean, I know that's a lot to ask, but some people, listen, people, some people go off of, some people glorify others. Meaning if somebody was telling you on social media, yeah, I own my own contract in business and I live in this big house, somebody like whoever on the other side that they're talking to might just be like, oh, that means he got money. Well, I'm about to try to really get with him. And this person, you know, she could be really genuine, sending you real person's pictures of herself. Meanwhile, you, the contract, um, you, the, own, the owner of the contracting business who lives in this big house, you're a bum on your mother's couch, okay? So when they're telling you big things and shit like that and social media, I would jot them down. So then later on, you could be like, well, Oh, so how's your job, your, your contract, the company going? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Oh, how's your house going? I live in an apartment. No, you told me this on this date. This is what you told me. This is what I'm talking about. Like when somebody on social media wants to date you or you want to meet on social media, I think like the number one key factor is to jot down things that they say, where they're from, shit like that. Because sometimes people don't remember their lies. You know what I'm saying? Because they're just popping them up off the top of the head. Unless it's something that they tell everybody, then of course they're going to know to repeat that. But if it's some shit they did, they just, you know, came out with on the top of the head, they're not going to remember that shit. And I mean, like online dating and social media dating is not for everyone. It's definitely not for me. But if it is something that you guys do or you're interested in, then definitely, like, you know what I'm saying, be aware of your surroundings. I like, you know what I'm saying? Be very cautious because you don't know who you're going to meet out there. And just like, you know, Tammy's daughter, Darla, she was with a pedophile. Thank God the police recognized this man and brought those girls home because God knows what he would have done, okay? He might have gotten out of jail, but... He still has that pedophile manner in, infected in him, okay? I don't know the right word to use, but it's an infection, a bad fucking disease or whatever. And he still has that mentality of a pedophile. And just to know that your child was around someone like that is a very scary feeling. I, I, I don't even let Mumsy walk home from school. And we live in Garden Lakes in um, 
it's a gated community or whatever. But, you know, her school is inside of Garden Lakes and so is Nay School, which is the high school. And people, I mean, it's not gated to where you need to code, but you can drive through it. But it's really huge. And it's, they say it's the bougie place of Avondale, but whatever. I don't feel that way. Um, but um, I don't even let her walk home. And it's only like a mile Okay, from my house, it's all inside of Garden Lakes and everybody's walking together. But I still don't let her walk home because I don't really trust anybody. You don't you don't know who's out there watching, you know what I'm saying, or who's lurking. You don't know. You really don't know. So you want to be cautious at all times. And there's never too much protection. There's never never feel like you're overprotective of your own children. Never feel that way because some people are not even protective okay meaning somewhat protective they ain't even half that they let their kids i don't know about y'all but at the age of like five and six i could not go outside and play by myself i be seeing like little kids walking the streets playing outside by themselves and shit walking home from school i mean i get that sometimes you have to walk home but they be just like outside it'd be like nine and ten o'clock not over here but like in other areas like why are you even outside little motherfucker you need to be in the house go take a bath and go lay down somewhere like and so i find that to be like people that don't care about their kids because if you like eight seven six years old you should not be outside at like nine o'clock at night like that's just my opinion i could be wrong or maybe too old school but that's just me that's just me. And I don't think like a five to year old should be outside playing by themselves. Like I that's just me because like I said, you don't know who's coming in the neighborhood and who's lurking. You know what I'm saying? That Mr. Ice Cream Man could be one of the motherfucking pedophiles. You you don't know. The world is is suspect, okay? So I don't think that you're being overprotective, but I do feel like, you know, for those of you guys who do like to do social media and meet people, just be very cautious and be very careful. You know what I'm saying? Because for real. You don't really know who you mean. And as far as like friends and family that you're trying to give advice to that really might benefit them in the long run in their life, sometimes you just got to walk away. And take that from me from personal experience. I've had to walk away and just let my son deal with the shit on his own because regardless of if I turn blue in the face today or tomorrow, he's not going to realize until he's ready to realize. The same thing goes with your mom and your sister, your brothers, your uncles and cousins. They're never going to realize until it's time and they're ready to realize. Don't stress yourself out trying to force somebody. Like straight up. Don't. Because it's not worth it. It's just, I'm not saying that it's really not worth it, but who the fuck want to be stressed out about somebody? Like, so you guys, I'm going to go. It's 2.40. Um, normally I get Mumsy at three, they get out at three ten. but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Mumsy gets out at four thirty because she has joined a club after school and I'm so proud of her and I'm so happy. Um, she was going to be on the cheer team, but she decided she wanted to be part of the library club. So she really does like it. She went last week with her and her bestie and she loves it. She gets to do crafts and stuff like that. And see, that's what my, my 11 year old does. She does crafts and she does make slime and just makes all kinds of crafts and just reads and shit like that. So yes, but I'm starving. So I want to go get something to eat from downstairs and that's why i'm going to not do the third one but i'm pretty sure i talked you guys ears off long enough so on that note leave all your advice and opinions down below i love you guys and i will see you guys on a soon to come video probably later on today right